Okay, so in the last video, we actually uh, set up our API so that it's returning our name and ID of each of our resolutions. Now, the only problem is those resolutions are coming from a hard-coded string inside of our resolver. Now, the ideal outcome here would be that this information comes directly from the database. Now, we don't have any collections or anything set up, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is creating a collection. We're going to be importing it into our resolver, and we're going to be outputting some resolutions from our database after sort of jankily adding, jankily, I don't know, we're going to be adding one into our database and it's going to be kind of uh, quick and dirty, okay? So let's go ahead and inside of our resolutions folder, inside of our API folder, we're going to create a new file named resolutions.js. I use a lowercase r for here, but I guess it doesn't really matter. And we're going to import inside of brackets mongo, mongo from meteor forward slash mongo, okay? Next thing we want to do is actually define our collection. So we can say const, and this is going to be resolutions with a capital R is equal to a new mongo dot collection. And new mongo collection accepts a string, which is a lowercase resolutions. So check it out, we're going to say a new constant resolutions is equal to a new mongo collection named resolutions. And the last thing we're gonna do is export resolutions, okay? Actually, I, I take that back, we're going to export default resolutions, so that this is the default export from this file. So this file is going to be evaluated on our server, but all it simply does is uh, define a new collection named resolutions. Now at this point, we can go ahead and import this collection into our resolver where we're going to want to insert something into it. So let's go ahead and in resolvers, we're going to import uh, capital R resolutions from and this is going to be dot forward slash resolutions, okay? So we're bringing in the collection. Now in a Mongo collection, we have access to all sorts of stuff, uh, one of which is dot find, okay? And if we wanted to find something, uh, we would actually need to call a dot fetch afterwards because dot find is going to return what's called a cursor, which is a whole bunch of extra information that we don't need. What we want is the array of IDs and names. So uh, fetch is going to give us just the uh, that information. So if we were to do something like const res is equal to resolutions.find.fetch and then we were to console log res out, you can see when this starts up what we're gonna be getting is an empty array, which is what we want. Okay, if you're not seeing an empty array here, something is wrong, because what we've done is we've defined a collection and we've said, hey, uh, Mongo, go give me everything from within this collection, and obviously there's nothing, so it's returning an empty array. Now, quick point, because right now, our schema in our GraphQL type and ID is going to mirror that of which our actual data is in the database in. But to think that those always need to be one-to-one, -one, it would be a huge mistake. Uh, your schema for GraphQL, this does not define the shape of the data in your database. In fact, your database could include a whole bunch of extra information, or your GraphQL schema could actually include extra information too. We'll go over that. That's not one-to-one -one here. Uh, this is simply just the schema of your public API. This is the stuff you can grab publicly, okay? And I just wanted to make that distinction here before we get inserting and adding into the database. And you'll see right now that stuff is going to be one-to-one, -one, but keep in mind that in typical applications, it's not. Okay, so we've gone to find and fetch and there's nothing in here. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're gonna do a quick and dirty insert. So to do that in this file, we're simply just going to do resolutions dot insert and we're simply going to pass in a name, and that name is going to be test res. Now, the reason I'm not assigning an ID here is because MongoDB and Media will automatically give this a underscore ID. So if I save this, and we head to our command line, you should see it inserted one, then when we did our find, it should actually return our object right here. Okay, this is a little small for you, but uh, what I'm seeing is an array of an object with test res 
in it. So if you aren't seeing that, then something definitely has gone wrong. However, uh, for those of you who have seen this, I'm going to comment this out. Okay, if you're having issues, follow the errors or go ahead and check out the example code. Okay, so we've inserted a new item into our database. So now whenever we run a find.fetch, we're actually getting a single item back. So, well, check it out. This is an array of an object with an ID and a name. Which, if you remember in our query, I think we defined that in our register API. Let me see. Yeah, so in our query schema, we defined the resolutions query to return a resolution inside of an array. Resolution is defined inside of the resolution schema, and that's defined as an ID and a name. So this data matches exactly this. So what we should be able to do instead of returning an array of objects here from our resolutions query inside of resolvers, we should be able to return the results of our resolutions.find.fetch and have this data be output exactly like we want it to in our app. So if I come back to our app now and it this refreshes, or since these are only server side changes, you might have to do an actual refresh. You can see here, test res is now being output from our query. And this is brilliant because we didn't have to change anything other than the resolver, right? We just changed the resolver to return the information directly from the database rather than some hard coded objects. So now our application is actually working with real data coming in from a database from our GraphQL query into our React component. This is exactly what we've been wanting to do the whole time to get this thing going. So now that data is coming in via our database, the next step, if you can imagine, is going to be inserting stuff into our database. Now, the reason why we didn't insert first is because we haven't gone over the concept of mutations and I wanted to get real database stuff coming in from concepts we've already talked about. Now in the next video what we're going to be doing is actually creating our form for our resolutions which is going to be just super simple and we're going to be writing our first mutation and hopefully when this is all said and done in the next video we should be able to see adding items to our resolutions database directly from GraphQL uh, from React and seeing this all update in real time. So it's going to be super duper cool. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to learn more about this stuff and help support Level Up Tutorials, then head over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and either purchase some stuff or become a subscriber. And uh, there's going to be a ton of GraphQL content this year. So if you're interested in this stuff, there's going to be so much more. I'm going to be doing some GraphQL and WordPress stuff. I'm going to be doing some GraphQL, some Graph CMS, some all, all sorts of stuff. So uh, become a subscriber and help support this free and paid content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.